Good morning, John. I'm at the office. It's too early. Hey, Nick and Nicole. Hi. 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 We're doing something weird today. I'm going to show you in just a second. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. This is Superintendent Juno. She is running for Congress. Yep. Yeah. To represent the state of Montana. Um, you're talking to my brother right now. Oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> so we do all the shooting down here. Oh, yeah. That looks good. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Super, super official. This hi. is my audience. Hi, audience. And also my brother. Hi, John. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wanted to talk to you, and I'm so grateful for you for doing this, uh, because I, I don't really want to talk about policy mm -hmm. or about your campaign or what you're going to do for Montana when you're in Washington, which I imagine is most of what you talk about, which is good. Right. I just want to talk about like government being an elected official, which you are right now, yeah. and you know how things have gotten very partisan and how that affects you running for office mm -hmm. and you as a person also, because I think often we, times we forget that politicians are people. But before we get into any of that, I'm going to give you a pop quiz. All right. I think you will know the answers to all of these I hope ones. So. You are running for? U.S. House of Representatives. And, uh, and that is? A House of Congress. So members of the House of Representatives do what? They make laws. And the final question in the pop quiz is how do you expect to afford the rents in D.C. Well, if you win? That's going to be a tough one. Probably get roommates and have to figure out who my friends in Congress are going to be. <laughs> so you got all the questions right. This is a goat. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Everyone gets a goat. <laughs> Everyone gets a goat. You guys don't get goats. I'm At sorry. MSU campus, they actually, the, they've been doing a lot of work registering voters and they have a vote goat. Oh, okay. Is campus. it a live goat? It is a live goat. <laughs> Like if you vote, you get to like pet the goat? I don't know. It's just a vote goat that goes around with them to draw people over so then you can register them to vote. Now we are on to everyone's favorite topic, uh, which is their own self. So we're <laughs> going to talk about you. So you currently hold an elected office. You are the superintendent of public instruction, Correct. which to, is just like the head of the head, we, yeah, it's the head of all the schools in Montana, okay. basically. Every four years, people vote for this position. It's one of our statewide offices mm -hmm. per our state constitution. Was your campaign for the statewide office, was that significantly different than what you're experiencing yes. now running for a more high profile Yes, thing? totally. You know, the issues are bigger. There's more scrutiny. You mm -hmm. know, there's all, there's a, there's a larger microscope on you, you could also get a bigger megaphone. And so that's good too. Mm -hmm. I imagine there's also tough parts of that, like not a lot of time scheduled for sleep. Also, there's a lot of people who are going to be saying nasty things about sure. you. I'm just curious what the worst part is. It I is guess. that. I think it's the negativity in politics right now. It's the divisiveness. Good ideas sometimes don't get to be discussed because we draw ideological lines and then talk about you know, fear-based sorts of issues rather than actually talking about issues that matter. So is it safe to say that during this campaign you kind of came out? Mm -hmm. So introduce my partner. You have somebody in your life and they they need to be there to support you. Did you feel like that was something that you needed to do for political reasons as well as personal ones? Uh, yeah, I think it was a mixture of both. People expect access. They want to know who their candidates are. Mm -hmm. And I think stepping up to this level from superintendent to Congress, it was important to mm -hmm. make sure things were out there because of the negativity that can sometimes happen. Mm -hmm. And it really hasn't been it become an issue, which yeah, is it's great. great. <laughs> I think particularly when we look at Montana and we, you know, the stereotypes around our state um, and its people, it actually hasn't become a political issue, yeah. which I think speaks volumes for our state and our country in the direction mm -hmm. we're moving. I was on your Twitter yesterday, right. it says in your bio, uh, 54th generation <laughs> Montana, which made me laugh. I just want to know how did you come to that particular number? I just figure it's a long time <laughs> and, um, you know, it can try to disprove it, <laughs> but it's sort of like, um, American Indian people have been in, here before mm -hmm. America was a country. And it's important to bring that aspect of mm -hmm. history to this race as well. If you aren't that tuned in, mostly what you hear about government is the most dysfunctional things. Right. In America, we have very strong <clears throat> local government. And I'm, I'm worried about the future in which young people aren't as interested in that. Yeah. Because they see government as dysfunctional or because they just see it as like an unpleasant task right. to try and get into that. Mm -hmm. For every message you get and every letter you get that says, I hate you and you're doing the wrong thing and you're horrible, you get three or four that are really good. Or you run into people where, who say, my kid would not have graduated were it not for Graduation Matters Montana. And yep, you're gonna always get the haters, but 
um, you know, the good stuff always outweighs those. I believe you, I guess. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think politicians can do to make it feel like to put the government, mm -hmm. like uh, the running of our country ahead of winning the election? Be present. 90% of politics is showing up and you show up where people are gathered and yeah. you listen and you know you put aside your partisan hat and you actually listen to people about mm -hmm. what are your issues why are they challenging and how can we make them better i mean that's really the function of government is to make things better and and that's why elections matter it really does matter who sits in those seats that can actually get down and do the business of good government how terrifying is a debate Oh, it seems scary. so scary. It is. I mean, it is something where I mean, you kind of have to guess on what you're going to get asked. It's mm -hmm. always a curveball. You never know. Getting up on that stage, it's something. I mean, you I are imagine. definitely awake. <laughs> <laughs> Last debate actually had an audience question. If you're elected, how will you help LGBTQ people mm -hmm. in the country? That sort of was a new question we hadn't been asked in previous mm -hmm. debates. And so my answer was, number one, get elected. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> it's very fair. So I, I guess my my last question is just how do you uh, how do you help Americans believe in government? Well, I think number one, get elected. I mean, I'm not naive about you know. There's a lot that needs to be fixed in government, mm -hmm. and we need to really start moving away from such divisive politics. But through my life and through my role as an elected official, I know good things can happen. And so I do, I'm optimistic. And I think most people who run for office, they want to make sure that things get better for the people that they mm -hmm. represent. You're stepping up, you're putting yourself on the line, you're opening yourself up for scrutiny, but you're also opening yourself up to have real conversations with people. And when you're elected, to make a difference and make a positive difference for the people who elected you. And I think that's really powerful. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. This was fun. Um, John, I'll see you on Tuesday. That's how I end my videos. John, there are so many serious arguments that need to be had, so many issues that need to be discussed, that it can sometimes feel hard to justify just having a conversation with a person who is being voted on to be in a public office as if they are a person. But I think that it's really important to try and do, to imagine these people as people, especially at this moment when the information silos and the voter die communication strategies are combining to create the most extreme partisanship I've ever seen in my lifetime. The result of all of this is that no one ever talks about the things that work and so everybody thinks that everything's broken, but it's not. Yes, things need to be maintained, and we all need to work to do that maintenance. But that doesn't mean that it's never been worse and that we're losing and that everything is crashing down around us. Americans, humans, we have problems right now but we are good at taking on problems. I obviously cut a lot out of this interview. The full interview was like a half an hour long. I would love it if you would go watch the whole thing. We got deeper into several of the topics from this video and then talked about stuff that isn't in this video at all. I thought it was a fascinating conversation and I hope that you will as well. You can watch that video here. Uh, click there, there's a link in the description. And of course, as a final reminder, educational videos are exempt from the time limit. So stop talking about punishments in the comments.